In this topic, we will define a basic object in IDA. We discuss both how a different object structures look like, but we also would see how to define the structures themselves. And we would have a short demo uh, to demonstrate how to create the structures and to show some examples. So first, uh, we would need to do a short overview of what we learned uh, previously. So in the previous part of the training, we talked about the object structure in memory. So we talked about different types of objects. One of them is an object that has virtual functions, inherited or defined. This object would have both a vtable in the first four or eight bytes of the object structure in memory. And afterwards, we would see all the members of the object. In the other uh, object we talked about, we don't have virtual tables. And in this case, we would only see the members of the object in memory. So in uh, future parts of the training, you would also see more complex objects than what we described previously. But those would be discussed in uh, the inheritance part and in also in some other parts of the training. But so far, we will only discuss the basic objects, how to define them, and how to understand how they look like. So if we want to uh, define an object structure in IDA, we can do it using the structure window um, that I will shortly show in the demo. So we can press insert to create and define a new structure. We can rename the structure using N. And we can add uh, data structure members using D or A, depends if you want an ASCII or not. Uh, you can also use Y in order to change the member types uh, to whatever you want. It can be another uh, structure, it can be some basic types. So this is something that you can also do. And now we would see a short uh, demo to show you how to interact with IDA and to create the structures that you need. Okay, so this constructor uh, in our demo is probably quite familiar from the previous part. Uh, so in the object creation part, we discussed about this constructor and we now will show how to create the structure for it. Of course, that when you create a structure for any other object, it will look uh, similar to what we do now. Uh, but just so you'll have an, a sense of how to do it yourself, uh, first, you can go to the Structure tab in here. If you don't see this tab specifically, you can go to Options, to View, sorry, Open Subviews, and then choose the right one. So in our case, it would be the Structure, um, yeah, the structure ones. You can also use the uh, short key, which is Shift F9, uh, and then you would get this tab. So when you come here, you have here a short uh, description of what you can do uh, when you want to create a structure. I already talked about uh, those things in the presentation, but we will see everything in a real example. So when I press insert, I get this uh, window being opened and you can here choose the structure that you want. In our case, it would be person because this is the name of the structure. There are some checkbox that we can uh, choose. So if you want to create a union instead of a structure, this is also something that we can do. Uh, there are also other options. So create before current structure. So this is something you can choose where you want to put the structure because you can see in the background that there are other structures. So you can choose this one. Don't include in the list. So this is another option that you have. But because we just want to create a standard structure, so we can just do that. We can press OK and we get this empty structure with the name that we chose. We can also rename the structure afterwards using N. And then we have a pop-up with this window. We can call it a different name. For example, uh, sorry. We can call it person A. And then you will have a different name. Of course, this is something that we don't want, but it's a possibility. 
And so the first thing that we did, we want to do is to create one. But the second we, thing we want to do is to add members. In order to do that, you can just press D and a new field will appear here. You can see that the size of uh, this field is one byte. You can see it here in the size of, here in the offset. But also you can see here that the type that Ida has for it is one byte. If you want to make it larger, you can just put your cursor on it and press another a few times uh, with the same key D and it will change the size. You can also press Y and define it. So if we want to make it smaller, you, we can do like a int and then you will have four bytes like we defined in here. If, for example, we created us one byte and then press Y and like that's an int, it automatically changed the size to four, which is the right size for the integer. And in our person object, like we can see, we can go back to the constructor and see here, we have the name, uh, which is eight, eight bytes, because it's a pointer, and we have the eight, which is four bytes, and uh, because it's an integer, um, and this is what we want to create in our structure. And the structure is stored in Rx in this case. And we can see that it's first storing the name and then it stores the age here. So first we want to create uh, an 8 bytes of the name. So we can change the size and then rename the field to name. Now we have a name in the first 8 bytes. Now we can put our cursor at the end of the uh, structure, press D again, and we will have a new field. So when we have a new field, we can change the size again. So in this case, it would be an integer, so four bytes, and we can rename it to age. After we rename both of them, we can also change the type. If I press Y, I get this uh, window, and I can change it to char pointer, for example, and I will have a small comment here in the end to show us that this is an offset to something else. Um, so it will help us to understand when we create structures. If we talk about like eight bytes that are for just like a, a member which is eight bytes or a pointer. Uh, here we have the age which is an integer. Here we are talking about like uh, x64 um, architectures, so the pointers are 8 bytes, uh, but in case you would have a x32 uh, byte, um, byte architecture, so you would have uh, pointers that are 4 bytes. So this is why my pointers here are 8 bytes. So now we define this small structure for the person object that we talked about, and we can see here on the left that we also see the offsets of the different members inside the um, inside of our structure. If you want to see our structure uh, in other uh, tabs, so we can also see that in the local types, we can see here, just a second, we can see the local types that if I do edit, I can see the uh, definition of the object in a different way. You can also create objects this way using the local types and just like write what you need. This is very useful when you have some header file or something else that you want to take uh, the information from or if you want to just write it much much quicker and without all the GUI options so this is also an option. You can import and export all of those structures you can see in the local types to your uh, local structures just by right-clicking and then just like um, you can export to header file which is also an option but you can also like double click and then it will be added to your structures. So there are a lot of options of how to deal with the local types and the structures. So um, this is in general how to create structures and deal with structures. And you can see how easy it is to create uh, the simple structure that we created. And of course, in other cases, when you have uh, other types of objects, you can, of course, create them uh, using the structure window or the local types.
And there are also an option to create structures using either Python or IDC, but this will not be covered uh, in our part this time. So as we showed in the demo, uh, we created a simple structure uh, using IDA uh, in the structure uh, window. Uh, we had an object with two members, a name and an age. And you can see that what we created looks something like this. And, but after we create the structure, we also need to correlate the assembly to the structure we created. So in order to do that, we have this uh, option to right click on a specific place uh, in the assembly. For example, I have here a short snippet of assembly. You can just right click on the offset from the register and then choose the structure offset and choose the correct one. In our case, it will be the name and the age uh, of the person object. And the assembly will look much, much clearer afterwards. So let's see uh, another short demonstration using the demo uh, to show you how to do it and how easy it is actually. So after we created the structure, as we said, we want to correlate the assembly with uh, the structure we created. I will show you how easily it can be, uh, but I want to show you this in an interactive way so you can see what I need to do exactly in order to create the structure in the assembly itself. So here in this line, we can see that RDX that has the name pointer will be stored in the first offset of the object structure in memory. So in this case, we know that this actually points to uh, the name of the person. So if I do right click, I can, uh, just a second. If I do right click, I can see that I have the structure offset option and that I can choose the rex plus a person.name. When I do that, the assembly becomes much, much clearer and I don't need comments for everything. And I can just see that what I'm looking at is actually the name. Of course, we can also use the T uh, in the keyboard in order to do that. But in order to make it more clear to you, I will do it with the mouth and with the GUI. So in this case, in this line, we can also see an assignment. In this case, it would be the age that is being stored in EDX. You can see it in here and in here. And I want to change this assembly line. So what I need to do is just like right click, go to off text, offset uh, structure, and then choose the, the person.age. So after we define our person structure in here, uh, you can also do it in the IDA view and just like edit the assembly lines and the offsets to be uh, what uh, relevant and um, help you a lot when you do the reversing process. So that's it uh, regarding defining basic objects in IDA. Um, I hope it was clear and that uh, now you can do an exercise. If you felt like some of the things were a little bit um, new to you, maybe you should come back and afterwards continue with the exercise. So good luck.